Hey guys, welcome back inside of the Plastic Planet. I am your host, Nick Knack, hanging out with you guys today uh, from deep inside of the bowels of the archive room of the Plastic Planet to give you guys another awesome video today. I've got a number, I've got a cornucopia of crap to unbox for you guys today. It should be a lot of fun. I've got uh, pickups uh, from my recent toy hunts over the last, oh gosh, I would say almost the last three weeks, maybe the last month. Uh, I got a lot of stuff too, guys. It's going to be really cool. I've got some uh, odds and ends, knickknacks, no pun intended on my name there. I got some uh, Star Wars Black Series I've picked up. I've got some Jurassic World uh, Dino Rivals figures to, to unbox. I've got, I've got, I actually picked up another Primal Clash figure as well. Got a little bit of Transformers love in there. I've got a NECA uh, mystery bag to unbox. I don't even know what the hell's in that thing. And uh, what else I got over there? Yeah, I just got a, got a ton of shit. So let's get to it, guys. Let's get to it. I've also got a special shout out at the end of this video, so stay tuned for that as well. Uh, that's been a long time coming. And also, please uh, forgive some of the varying sound uh, issues down here. I am in the archive room of the Plastic Planet. It is an unfinished basement after all, and uh, we do have the AC running, but hey guys, it's the middle of July and I'm not shutting that bastard off. Not for one second, hell no. All right guys, let's do it right now. Knickknacks, Plastic Planet. Out of the plastic plant. Like I said before that intro there, we got a ton of shit to get to. So I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna tick around today. We're just gonna get right to the meat and potatoes of this vid. And that is showing off some awesome crap I got like this from Walmart. This up for only three dollars. Sometimes, sometimes the coolest things are the cheapest things. At least I think so. And you know what? In the past, I've said on this channel, I'm a bit of an action figure snob. And you know what? That is still true. I am very particular of what I'll spend my dollar on. But sometimes when you get something just so cheap and so fun, you just got to get it. That's why I bought this Creatures of the World Dinosaur 20 set playset. Look at that. You get all those dinosaurs in there for $3. Plus, there's some rocks. There's some trees. This is going to be awesome. I actually have a grander plan for these. Um, I am working on a larger scale diorama up in my ceiling that I'm going to get to in a future video. I've been teasing it for a while now. It's not quite to where I want it to be just yet to show it off here on the plastic planet but it is getting there quickly and uh, when it is ready I'm gonna show it off and it's gonna be a grand video and you guys are gonna really dig it I think at least I hope so uh, I'm really proud of it so far but uh, anyway this is gonna go into that but let's get these guys open and check them out for only three dollars <laughs> Oh man, do you guys remember when you'd like go to the grocery store with your mom or dad or whoever whoever happened to love you as a child and you'd be walking through the grocery store and you'd see like the, the cheap toy section, the little tiny toy section they'd have in there and there'd be army guys in there, there'd be like plastic cowboys with a with like with like a wagon wheel set and then of course there'd always be the dinosaurs, well I always liked the dinosaurs myself, that's why I picked this set up because it just reminded me of that. Again, three dollars. Um, it's actually really pretty crappy and chintzy, but but it's but it's awesome. I mean, scientifically, uh, the, uh, the a number of these uh, animals belong together about as about as relevantly as, as if I you know like stuck an stuck an elephant in there or a United States senator. It makes no freaking sense uh, from a scientific point, but that's okay because it's it's not about that at all. And and the the, the sizes and scales are all wonky as shit too. Uh, but it's still really damn fun. What a fun little what a fun little collection. If you were if you were five years old, this would be absolute freaking gold. Uh, so yeah, this is this is gonna go into my my, my new diorama I'm, I'm working on in the rafters down here in the archive room, and it's gonna be freaking awesome. Uh, so yeah, not much to say there. Three dollars, that's fun. And you know, you're getting disposable toys or almost disposable toys when you were a kid. In some ways, it was almost funner than getting a Star Wars figure because you didn't worry about taking these guys out and running them through the mud. You know, running them over with your bike. You know, you didn't care. They were fun. They were fun. They were awesome. They were cheap. And, and, and you know what? You, you almost had more fun playing with these kind of toys than you did with your more expensive uh, 
fair like your He-Man or your G.I. Joes or your Star Wars figures or, your, or especially your Transformers. Uh, you wanted to be careful with those, but when you had stuff like this, there was almost like a liberating sen a play sense with these that you could do whatever the hell you wanted. You could you could chew on them. You could you could run them, like I said. You could stick them in the mud. You could put a firecracker on them. They're just awesome. Yeah, awesome. Alrighty, next on our list, we're going to be staying in that same genre or theme for at least the next couple un unboxings for you guys. Next on our list, I've got a couple, I've got two actually, uh, Jurassic World Dino Rivals uh, action figures to show off to you guys. First and foremost on that list is the Allosaurus I picked up just recently at my Walmart. Really dig this guy a lot. These Dino Rivals are really really cool um they're a little bit different than the original line that came out accompanied by the jurassic world fallen kingdom motion picture uh these ones tend to be a little more colorful and a little more just kind of flamboyant a little bit which i kind of like um i don't know like again i don't know how like scientifically accurate that is uh maybe who knows i mean we don't really know for sure how colorful the dinosaurs were they might have been really really colorful um and full of feathers and all that shit but uh, i kind of like them looking like this uh but anyway uh this is really really cool i'm a big fan of Allosaurus, at least I have become a big fan of Allosaurus as far as my favorite dinosaurs go in recent years. Uh, you know, when I was a kid, I always thought Allosaurus was a bit of a chump because uh, my only like exposure to him was in uh, my favorite dinosaur book, which I read on this channel about oh over a year ago, In the Time of the Dinosaurs. It's a great video. I actually read the book to you guys, and it's awesome. Uh, you guys should check that video out. That video didn't get a lot of love, didn't get a lot of play back when I when I when I uh, when I uh, uploaded it, but it's a fun video. Uh, anyway, so Allosaurus, this is absolutely freaking awesome. Uh, let's get him out right now. Alrighty guys, so I got him unboxed for you guys and here he is, looking really, really cool. Um, I, I do dig, it's almost like a dark blue, maybe a navy blue, almost kind of a purplish blue, maybe, I don't know. Uh, but anyway, uh, he's got a couple uh, little play features or play gimmicks, which I don't mind on these uh, Jurassic World Mattel figures. A lot of times play gimmicks are, as a collector, kind of get in your way a little bit, you know what I mean? You just want to put it on a shelf, make it look nice. But th they do such a good job camouflaging the play gimmicks on these figures that I don't really mind them at all. And honestly, like the mechanics almost give them a very animated feel. I mentioned that time and time again every time I show off one of these on my channel, but I really do dig them a lot. Uh, this one's got kind of a claw slight slashing action there, so that's kind of cool. And then, of course, this, this button here opens and shuts his mouth. My only complaint with a number of these, uh, these Jurassic World dinosaurs, uh, these Mattel Jurassic World dinosaurs, is you just can't seem to pose them. Some of them I just want to pose with their mouth shut. They're all gaping wide open, and uh, that's sort of by design because of, again, because of the gimmick. So there, there's maybe a disadvantage there. But I would really like to display this guy with his mouth kind of shut like that, but it's kind of difficult to do. I might have to maybe get a piece of scotch tape and kind of put it on the on the back side of it from wherever I'm displaying it. But still really cool. Uh, a little weird, he has a purple tongue. Uh, you know, not sure if he's been, you know, drinking drinking grape Kool-Aid there or, or uh, you know, I don't know. That's sort of weird. Uh, maybe, maybe a grape, grape uh, Slurpee from 7-Eleven. Mm, that sounds delicious. But anyway, yeah, he's really cool. Uh, he's a great figure. Uh, he's got some, like, some plumage on, the, on his backside here. Maybe those are feathers. I don't know. But he's really cool. He's got a nice, got the, got the cool crest on his forehead. Looking really, really freaking awesome. So, yeah, there he is. Alrighty, so next on my list, I got another theropod dinosaur. And if you're not a dinosaur dork like me, theropod is is referring to the uh, the the the, the subfamily of dinosaurs that walked on two legs, uh, like Tyrannosaurus rex. Uh, this is a uh, Ceratosaurus. He's really cool. He's got the little horn on his head. I think he was the guy that came into the uh, into the control room when, it, when when the volcano was going off in Fallen Kingdom. I think he got. I think he was a victim to the lava there. But still, very cool uh, looking uh, dinosaur there. Again, I do like these uh, Dino Rivals. I think they've really upped their game with the paint apps on these. Um, uh, Mattel has, and they're looking really really nice. So there is the box. Him in the box. You guys can see. Really really freaking cool. I don't know. Maybe I'm showing my mug off too much in this video, but uh, too bad. So anyway, there he is. Very cool. Let's get him out of the box, too. All right, so here's one more shot of these guys uh, without, uh, minus my, my, my big ugly mug. Uh, looking really, really cool here. Kind of dig these guys. They're kind of having a little bit of a face off there. And it uh, looks like uh, Ceratosaurus is being a little bit, little bit, a little bit of a, 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 a sub in this position because Allosaurus is about to take it to him. You can tell Allosaurus is about to rip his fucking skull off. I'm sorry, rip his freaking skull off. But, uh, you know, Ceratosaurus is saying, no, 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 I yield, I yield, I'm backing down. Uh, one thing, this Ceratosaurus doesn't seem to be standing very well. Uh, 
Um, I have him kind of hooked on my glass over there. I might have to work on that. In all fairness, this table is not exactly conducive to standing action figures on. It's a little bit of a a little bit of a puffy uh, a little bit of a puffy surface. So it's a so it's a little difficult to uh, really get good poses with my action figures on this surface. But it is uh, my review table, and I, maybe I need to get a new one. But anyway, yeah. So there are these figures looking really good together. Um, and yeah, they're going to go up on a shelf here. I don't think I'm going to put them in my main Jurassic World or Jurassic Park display. Um, I think these are going to go on a shelf. Kind of got a really cool dinosaur slash monster shelf going on. And uh, these guys are definitely going to be going on that. Alrighty guys, we are still in the dinosaur theme here a little bit. Actually, very much so. Uh, my last, uh, well, last dinosaur themed uh, uh, thing to show off to you guys, I finally completed the entire set. It took a while. Just wasn't really feeling this figure at first, but the more I looked at it again and again and again at Walmart, I said, yeah, I kind of need to get this. And I think they had it marked off a couple bucks. Yeah, I got the Primal Clash Triceratops Dino Squad uh, figure slash um, uh, beast in this in this box here. This is so cool. $14, guys. I think I paid like 10 for them. But look at all the awesomeness you get here. That's what happens when you have an unlicensed toy. You're not when when a company doesn't have to pay licensing fees, they pass that savings on to the consumer. And Lanyard has definitely done that with these Primal Clash action figures. He's going to go up with my other Primal Clash core figures. If you guys haven't seen that video I cut for this last winter, go Go do that. Go watch that video because it is freaking awesome. It's really, really freaking cool. I worked my ass off on it, and you guys should check it out because I, I give all these guys, uh, you know, uh, names and personalities because you know, primal clash, act, uh, primal clash action figures from Lanyard are open-ended imagination play sources for kids. Um, these guys can be anything they want them to be, and that's what's kind of the beauty of them. Like I said in the video, they are like adventure people were to us if you were a child of the of the late 70s and early 80s so do check that out all right so let's get him out really fast and see how he looks next to these jurassic world uh dino rival figures because these actually hold their own too you're gonna see in just a sec oh holy balls look at this thing this thing is pretty freaking awesome love the paint apps on this guy as well very vibrant very colorful uh, look at the detailing you see on his horn there you can see the like the the the, the lines as it, as it comes through his like He's like, you know, his horns, which is like the same stuff that like our fingernails was made out of. I don't know what that's called, collagen or something. I don't know. I'm trying to get all scientific -y with you guys. But anyway, really cool, uh, really cool Triceratops. He's got a nice beak there. Uh, the mouth does open and shut. Really nice, uh, firm joint on that. So uh, you can pose it either way. Uh, the dude is the dude. What are you going to say? He's he's just a badass guy with a big freaking knife riding a Triceratops. He is freaking awesome. He's going to need a backstory. Maybe we'll do that in a future video. Uh, like my other Primal Clash figures, I can't think of anything at the moment. But he does need a backstory. Another Another cool thing is he's got like some kind of like I don't know who knows what this thing could be it could be like a power generator you know he's toting into base camp I mean who knows I mean you know again again this thing is only limited by how cool your imagination is and also his accessories hook on to uh, the back of this like uh, saddle or whatever this thing is like I don't know but it's really badass right yeah the colors on this and you can see him next to he does scale up really really nice um, with the Dino Rivals Jurassic World figures. And I'm sure Lanyard Toys did that on purpose because they're smart. They're really smart. That's some smart uh, piggyback marketing, in my opinion. And I'm trying to keep them in focus, guys. Sorry about that. But yeah, that is one awesome looking Dino Rival. Alrighty guys, last but not least, look who joined me. It's my good buddy, Uncle Pat. He came by because he's got to go close out his box at our local comic book store. Yeah. Uh, you need to save some money. Well, you know, <laughs> it adds up when you don't go for, you know, six months at a time and then you go in and it's a hundred dollar bill. Yeah, yeah. I, I hear that. So. I hear that. So hopefully he'll be putting that towards more collectibles, like maybe some fans, toys, transformers, or something there you awesome. Go. That's well yeah. Spent. Yeah. So anyway, so Uncle Pat is going to unbox this, uh, this item with me. This is really, really fun guys. I picked this up at Target last night. I just saw it. Kind of went against my better judgment because I hate <laughs> mystery boxes. <laughs> JJ. This is very mystery. <laughs> JJ Abrams. I hate mystery boxes. I hate uh, I hate mystery figures. But this is a NECA uh, blind bag, and it's very scrunchy, so you can't like molest the molest the shit out of it to see what's in there. So you give give it a feel. Yeah, you can't tell what that figure is. No, you can't tell. So there is twenty five dollars worth of collectibles in this. I only spent nine dollars and ninety nine cents. 
Um, there's the back side of it. I don't know if that matters, but it's just a bunch of bunch of question marks. What will be in this bag? Okay. You ready to check out what's in this bag? Dude, it's kind of it's kind of exciting. It is very exciting. It's a lot like it's a lot like this is a lot like opening up a uh, like a present on Christmas Eve when you were a kid. Christmas Eve presents were always in my family, like yes. the family presents. So you got something from like your aunt in the mail <laughs> and you're not sure. I mean, sometimes, you know, my aunt, my aunt, some, my aunt one time sent me the legend of Zelda. That was awesome. That is pretty awesome. She also sent me socks one year and, and say, mittens. I think, I think they were mittens or perhaps. <laughs> so uh, there could be, there could be the legend of Zelda in here or there could be socks. So let's find out right now. Let's just open this bad boy up. You ready? Let's do it. I'm very excited. So let's just cut this open. This is the campiest thing ever. Yeah, this is awesome. I, you know what, I, I, again, I. These are so hit and miss, and you know, I might like, this, this could be like, oh, there's a bunch of bags shit. Bags inside of bags. It's bags inside of bags, so. Start with that, we'll just want to go dump it all out or start one at a time? Yeah, we'll just dump it all out here. So it's all kinds of stuff. It's all kinds of shit. And I didn't, I thought it was by NECA, so it's really weird. Um, we got some kind of Age of Ultron. I don't know what's in there. Um, is it dog tags? I think it is. Yeah, that is kind of a want, 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 want. Yeah, it, yeah, it's a, it's a Hulk Buster dog tag. So that's up right up your alley. That today. is right up my alley. So uh, all right, we'll wear that today. And then I don't know what this is. Is this like that's a, a cable? It's one of those cable grabbers. Oh, so he grabs your like your your phone cable, like when you like right in the car maybe. Yeah, or like computer cables, like okay. off your house, off your computer. So we got a Hulk cable thing. Yeah. All right, so that's Sorry. sort of that's okay. That's okay. A Marvel theme yeah, we got a Marvel theme going. That's okay. We don't have a lot of Marvel stuff here. It's not all Marvel. Though. No, it's it isn't. Because look, oh, this is DC. Now, look, go. we got this little uh, Joker bunny. Do you know what the hell these things are? Uh, I forget. Well, it's I think some it kind. Of... It in the pack. It doesn't say on the pack. Yeah, the it's a, it's a, it's a. I can't read that. It's a dinky. It's a dinny, dinny, dunny, dinny, dot. Dunny, Dunny, it's a Dunny. I don't know, guys. Sorry, <laughs> uh, but he's cool, I guess. It's a little vinyl figure, little Joker vinyl figure with weird ears, I guess. So that's that's different. Yeah. And then last but certainly not least, oh look at this. This is kind of cool, right? Maybe. This is a little bit more. This is more my speed. Yeah. This is definitely more of my wheelhouse. Um, we got a Wonder Woman plushie from who did this? This is also from Kid Robot. Finny. Fit funny. Funny. P H U N N Y. I don't know this company. Maybe you guys do. I'm sure I'm just looking like an asshole. But anyway, there's Wonder Woman. Wonder Woman. So yeah, that was the the grab a bag there, and um, yeah, I'm kind of disappointed. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, oh, it's my neck. There's gonna be a I, I was thinking, predator. Yeah, I was thinking there'd something. be like a predator in there, yeah. or like a, or like a maybe a maybe a Terminator, right? Or a, you know, any a, of their awesome yeah. action. Uh, yeah, that's what I that's what I thought would be there because it does say. NECA on the back here. Maybe, maybe it's like, maybe there's a bunch of different companies that contribute to this, and NECA is just one of them. It might be. And so um, that's, I think that might be the case. Uh, but anyway, that's $9.99 at Target. If you guys want to, you know, take a chance to spend ten bucks on a bunch of shit you probably don't want. All right. <laughs> Alrighty, guys. Well, let's just stay within that superhero theme for just the next two reveals of of my recent pickups. These I'm really excited about. These are sort of the, these are some of the, some of the better pickups I've gotten in the last couple weeks. And I picked them up at my local uh, comic book store or slash collectible store, Hero Headquarters in Westminster, Colorado. I've featured them twice on this channel. I've given some tours of that store. It's a fun store. It's very nice. Um, and I do dig these a lot. These have a little bit more of a premium feel to them than a mass retail six inch figure. They are roughly six inch figures, I believe. But these are absolutely awesome. I am very biased towards these DC Direct uh, DC Essential action figure line. They run between roughly between $25 and $30 a piece, depending on the figure. And considering they're maybe $5 to $10 higher than what you'd pay for a mass retail, like a DC Multiverse or even like a Star Wars Black Series or a Marvel Legends figure, I believe that these are just like light years ahead as far as, as, far as a sculpt, uh, paint apps and just overall quality. I really dig this line a lot. Now, of course, I've got some bias towards DC over Marvel, as you guys know, if you guys follow my channel. And it's no disrespect to you, Marvel fans. I love you guys too. It just, 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 just aren't the superheroes I grew up with. I grew up on the on the DC line uh, in the in the 80s, in the late 70s, 80s, and 90s. Uh, but anyway, so I got picked up this Wonder Woman figure. She is absolutely amazing, and you guys are going to see it better once I get it out of the box. We've got a lot of reflect uh, light reflectivity going on here with uh, with the clamshell here. But she is absolutely awesome. There's the box. Um, 
absolutely fantastic looking figure. I will get her out for you guys so you guys can see her up close again because uh, this is this was sort of a secondary uh, thought when I went to the store because I actually had another figure in mind. I got her as well, but that figure was the Hank Henshaw, aka Cyborg Superman from the reign of the Superman. Uh, that, that, that film I just watched recently from DC Animated, amazing film. If you guys haven't seen it, it is actually part two of a two-parter. Uh, of course, the first one is, of course, The Death of Superman. Of course, it follows the original DC Comics uh, Death of Superman slash Reign of the Supermen uh, comic book series, which came out in the 1990s. I read those as a kid. I say the word kid lightly. I was actually in high school when those came out, but uh, that was that was definitely like that, that 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 series definitely like popped my cherry on actually reading DC comics. I didn't read a lot of DC comics growing up, but I love DC comics because of, of 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 their television and motion picture adaptations, obviously. But I didn't actually read the comic books too much until then, and I kind of popped my cherry on those, and I absolutely love that comic book series, and I love this character in particular of the of the. Uh, of the faux Superman as it would be, or the imposter Superman as it would be. I loved, uh, I loved this character a lot. The the, the cyborg Superman, Hank Henshaw. Uh, That's a really good story arc on him. Really cool figure, um, and he was really badass, really badass in the Reign of the Superman animated series, which of course is a is a loose adaptation of that original comic book series. Uh, again, highly recommend that animated series. So anyway, without further ado, here's the here's the packaging one more time. Uh, just so you guys can get a little bit of an idea of that. Uh, these are actually two of the figures in the entire wave. Um, I don't. I'm not a. Um, I'm not a uh, completist on these DC Essentials. I just kind of pick them up, the ones I like, and, and and take 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 the ones I like, leave the ones I don't. Um, there is a Supergirl and a Cheetah uh, figure in this wave as well. Actually, the Supergirl looked pretty impressive as well. Um, but yeah, these are really really fucking uh, freaking awesome. And uh, let's get them out of the box right now. Alrighty, so check it out. There is the DC Directs Cyborg Superman DC Essentials. That is an absolutely pretty awesome figure. The paint apps are great. The details on him are great. There's a little bit of uh, kit bashing that went on between this figure here and then this uh, DC Essential Superman, uh, as you see right here, if, we'll, if the camera will focus for me. But yeah, again, really damn cool figures. Um, looking really damn nice. I have them up in my detail here. Not sure if this is where I'm going to put him permanently, but I have him flanked here with my other DC Essential Superman. And then here is the Wonder Woman. And look at that face sculpt. That is why I bought that figure. Love the colors on her. I love, I love primary colors with my superheroes. I've mentioned that before on this channel. I'm not as into the darker, more subdued colors. I love primary colors that just pop. I love the gold and the red and the blue on her. I'm um, looking really fantastic. There she is. Um, yeah, she is just absolutely freaking gorgeous. Yeah, that's a good shot right there. Um, her, her blue eyes just really pop there. Uh, against her black hair um, gorgeous gorgeous looking figure and uh, really really awesome so yeah stoked to get these guys all right you guys we're getting down there in the crux of what i picked up just got only three more reveals for you guys and these are pretty good ones though uh i don't know if i saved the best for last necessarily but these are pretty damn nice as well uh so i was at my local walmart store and i found this wave and I, you know what guys i am not an avid like like those DC Essentials, DC Direct figures, I'm not an avid uh, Black Series collector. I do kind of uh, pick them up on a as-want basis. I'm definitely not a completist on this line. And these two figures are a testament to that, considering they are part of the Archive um, line that is just coming out in stores. A re-release of old Black Series figures. I think they've been tweaked a little bit, maybe. I, I could be wrong. You can correct me in the comment section if you know any better. But I did pick up the Anakin Skywalker. Uh, archive Black Series figure. Very stoked to get him. Never had him. I think he was he was a well coveted figure for a long time with collectors. Uh, this one right here, the original, um, was was very coveted by collectors for a long time. He came out in 2014, according to the back of the box. And uh, you know, I passed on him then, so I picked him up now. And uh, really glad to have him. Again, these aren't these are these are these are hit and miss to, for me. Um, but I do try to like. Sometimes I do try to vote with my dollar. As consumers, that's the best thing we can do when we can do it. It's not always pragmatic, but I do try to vote with my dollar when uh, when a, when Hasbro is doing something I like, and I like to see them um, revisiting the prequel. So I will I will try to support that as much as I can. So I did pick up this figure, and I also got just because. Well, he's really cool, and I almost got him back when he came out in 2014 as well. That is, of course, the Yoda. Because look, he comes with the snake, you know, very a la uh, 19, 1980 uh, uh, Kenner Kenner Yoda. So that's very, very cool. So I got him as well. So there is him in the box. So let's, I'm going to get these guys open, and uh, yeah, that's pretty damn cool. They had a self-destruct. An Imperial probe droid. 
Alrighty, so check it out. Here is Yoda now removed from his packaging. Of course, he does have his uh, lightsaber there as an extra accessory. I'm going to kind of display mine, I think, without it. I'm going to go with kind of more of an Empire Strikes Back feel. He's got his Gimmer stick there and his pet snake slimy. Or is that Oscar the Grouch's pet worm? I don't know. But anyway, so yeah, he looks pretty nice. The, the face sculpt uh, on him is is decent, I think, for a Hasbro figure. And the and the paint apps are pretty nice. It's a, it's a, it's a good solid green. I don't know if Yoda was that green. Um, he does feel that the pose feels a little little more, uh, I don't know, it feels, it feels like his legs are a little too separate than what they should be, if that makes a lick of sense, I don't know, uh, but yeah, he's alright, I mean, that's a nice figure, and he looks good up here on my shelf, there's the Anakin as well over here, the episode 3 Anakin, um, if you can see that face sculpt, looks pretty decent, got him next to, uh, next to my episode 2 Padme, not too bad, here is the, uh, the alternative head sculpt, they do give you two, um, there are the Sith eyes for you, yeah, that's kind of kind of wicked looking right that's pretty cool got, looks like is that hair or a giant gash on his head no that's just his hair sorry so yeah that's not too bad though that's pretty cool so yeah he's got two different head sculpts that's a that's a that's a value add i would say um yeah and he does pose up and stand very nice on the shelf so looking really nice there my my black series uh collection's coming along pretty nice i would say if i don't if i don't say so myself looking nice looking damn nice <laughs> Guys, well, last but certainly not least, I picked up this Generation 1 reissue, Optimus Prime, a Walmart exclusive, I do believe, from Hasbro. And you know what? I, I, I kind of laugh at myself because when this when these first hit the shelves, I kind of mocked it on this channel because it was going for a whopping $50. Um, I ended up getting mine for a slightly lower price of $35. $35 felt a little more reasonable for this, although still overpriced in my opinion. Um, you know, my first and utmost gripe about this is, you know, especially if you were charging $50 for it, is where's the freaking trailer? I mean, I would pay $60, give me the trailer. I think that, that, that seems, that seems logical. But uh, as always, guys, as collectors, we do get that little bit of a shaft, that little bit of a collector upgrade needling that companies like Hasbro like to do to us. And this figure is evident of that. But still, it's a nice box. Looks really good. Um, it is written. I believe there's an... I think it's written in France, French as well on here. So that kind of sucks that the, um, the, especially like the descriptor card is is bi is uh, multi language. Uh, not not there's anything against people who speak French or anything like that, but I'm just saying it just kind of clutters up the packaging a little bit having dual languages on the back of the box. So that's sort of unfortunate in my opinion. But nevertheless, it's really cool. The box itself is really cool. But screw it, we're gonna open it. Amazing. A booby trap that actually catches boobies. Alrighty, so check it out. I've removed him from his box, and this is everything that he comes with. Obviously, is the main rig himself, Optimus Prime. Comes with his fists, and, and this is interesting. He actually comes with two different uh, gun assortments. I believe this is more of the G1 original mold, and then he kind of has this more heavier stock uh, gun as well. So that's kind of a nice add-in, I guess. It doesn't replace having a trailer and roller and all the good stuff that is accompanied with that. But nevertheless, it's still a nice add-in. So let's get him transformed into robot mode and check him out. Alrighty, so check him out. Here he is standing front and center with my new dinosaurs as well. I've not put any of the uh, decals on him yet, so that's why he's missing his, his iconic Autobot logos on both or one arm, depending on what your preference is. But this was really nice. He transformed very beautifully, very nice, tight joints. It's kind of kind of weird to be able to do that and to transform him like that. One standout with this particular reissue is you do get full-length stacks which was different from the reissue that I had, which I think dated back to like 2003, maybe 2004. Yeah, so just to compare and contrast, you can see here is the brand new one, the 2018 or 2019 Optimus Prime. Eh, we're going to say 2018 uh, Optimus Prime Hasbro reissue. Here is the, I, I can't remember what year this came out. I want to say early 2000s. Anyway, this was a reissue from Hasbro from the early 2000s. And you will see, no, his smokestacks are not broken. I mentioned this before on my channel when talking about this particular figure. Uh, they came like that. It was some kind of weird child safety feature thing. And do excuse the dust on this particular uh, figure he's a little dusty but yeah uh, you can tell this this figure looks a lot nicer uh, a because it's new and b because i do like the paint apps a little better on them. the the red is a little bit different i don't know i guess you know 
six one half dozen another but still that's a nice compare and contrast for you guys um, i don't have his gun with me right now it's tucked away in his trailer but uh, nevertheless i think he came with the uh this gun here so um yeah so that's a nice compare and contrast for you obviously i'll get the decals on him and get him looking a little more pretty but he looks really good and uh and it's nice to have two different ones one to put in robot mode and one to keep in semi mode so that's kind of nice as well <laughs> Alrighty guys, well that is going to wrap up this edition of the Plastic Planet, but first, but first I wanted to give a really quick shout out to a couple subscribers. Um, one of them is Following Freddy, my good buddy Following Freddy, that is his YouTube handle. Um, he he sent a requ this request out to me almost a month ago, and I apologize Following Freddy, I know things have been kind of crazy around here, I haven't done like a regular transmission from the Plastic Planet where I'm just talking collectibles, and that's the episode that I wanted to throw this into, uh, this, this little shout out. Uh, he sent me a video of his daughter's plastic planet i want to say inspired fish tank that features this awesome ufo uh led light up ornament behind me that's in my my fish tank here is his daughter his lovely daughter's tiffany's uh fish tank and it is really really awesome as you can see it lights up and it's got all kinds of bells and whistles and then looks like he's got a beta fish in there and uh, i think that's a red-tailed shark really really awesome awesome fish tank there tiffany and i also wanted to give a shout out to his lovely lovely wife jennifer as well you guys are freaking awesome and thank you so much for checking out the plastic planet and sending me that awesome awesome video that is really really freaking cool also also i wanted to give a shout out to my good buddy wisconsin packer paul he sent me a couple uh, a couple pictures just recently of uh, some of his new transformer acquisitions including that awesome jet fire that thing is so cool i am so freaking jealous of that and he also sent me some bumblebees as well this picture of these bumblebees and one of them is the the one that the one did there there's a looks like a really original g1 but it is a it is a newer figure and it looks incredibly awesome especially that face sculpt on it so thanks for sending those paul and hey guys if you guys want to show share me share with anything that you want to show off on the plastic planet collector wise of course uh, please feel free to do that. I have an email address. You can send it to knickknacksplasticplanet at gmail.com. Would love to see pictures of your collection, new acquisitions, anything like that. And I will try to show it off to you uh, off here on the Plastic Planet in a somewhat timely basis. I do apologize following Freddy about getting up that shout out. Had a lot of things going on. We had a visit from Bloody Mary recently and that wasn't a really good time to, to do that particular shout out. And then of course I, I went to went to California and, and had a bunch of uh, Galaxy's Edge, uh, Star Wars Galaxy Edge, Galaxy's Edge, Disneyland related videos that followed from that, at least two of those. So I've been really busy here, but normally it wouldn't take that long for me to get a, a, a shout out here on the Plastic Planet. And I do apologize once again uh, following Freddy and thank you so much uh, Jennifer and Tiffany for watching and thank you Paul for sending me those awesome Transformers as well alright guys well hey that's going to wrap up this edition of the Plastic Planet please like share comment please do subscribe if you're not a subscriber we'd love to have you here each and every week right here on the Plastic Planet we have a great time and also in addition to all that there is some channel uh, updates I want to give you guys really really fast um, I will be doing a weekly uh a weekly live stream with uh, PJ, the Paradox Nerd, and Easy Company Collectibles, uh, Easy, uh, two really great guys. We've been doing a live stream over on the Paradox Nerds channel every Tuesday night. Tuesday nights work really, really well for me. Weeknights are really good for me uh, to be able to live stream. Um, I'll be doing a live stream over there with those guys every Tuesday night. And in addition to that, I will be still doing some live streaming uh, on occasion on Saturday nights with Rob Banks over on the Red Cup Review. Um, I haven't had a chance to hook up with Rob recently. Uh, Saturdays are kind of uh, kind of, kind of harder for me to, to, to commit to a live stream, a regular live stream, just because of the uh, the logistics of family life and, and what I do with this channel. Uh, that Saturday weekends are kind of my, my time for um, kind of, you know, creative synergy, so to speak, for my own channel. And so uh, I haven't been able to do Rob's show, but I still, uh, you know, Rob and I are still we're, bro we're buds, we're bros. It's all good. Uh, it's all, I'll definitely be, be making an appearance on the Red Cup Review a live stream in the near future. But also, just to let you know, and it's not happening this week, but following Tuesday, do catch me over on PJ's channel on Tuesday nights at 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. That's 6 p.m. Mountain uh, for, the, uh, for, for our live stream over there. And uh, it's a really good time. We have a great time. We talk mostly Star Wars, talk hot toys, things like that. So it's a great, great time. Great show, great time. All right, guys, well, like I said, that's going to wrap things up. And uh, like I always like to say, guys, hope you enjoyed this this uh, little showcase today. And like I always like to say, uh, life is also very, very, very short, guys. So get out there, guys. Get out there. Fill it. 
with some plastic crap. Like all the shit I showed you tonight. Pretty awesome. All right, guys. Later. Love you. Bye. You could melt them with a magnifying glass. You could play with matches and set them on fire. You could flush them down the toilet. There's so much fun shit you could do with this stuff.